Bose headphones fail in one ear. Use this video to help yourself fix your own headphones. Bose model QC15 and QC25, both very expensive headphones from Bose, tend to blow driver speakers. So effectively this little video here is uh, showing you how to replace those driver speakers. A couple of tips and tricks on how to make that happen. So what we're going to do is we will have a look at the QC25s first. You remove the uh, foam ear padding and then you remove the little ear, ear material pad there which has got some sticky tape on it. The cushions and the pads. And then what you do is you take a screwdriver and you undo some of those little Phillips screws in there. In fact, all of the Phillips screws that you can get your hands on. Um, there's one either side of that little piece of, uh, of tape that's in there. And then the back will come off. Now, um, these headphones are actually quite good. They're quite well built, I must admit. It's just those drivers that are the problem. Uh, I don't know where those drivers are manufactured, but um, those seem to be the things that let these headphones down. It may also be a common fault in the QC35s, but you'd hope they'd fixed it. Anyway, what I'm pointing to here is a little slot where the microphone, which you can see the microphone there, uh, is uh, is located and effectively it listens that microphone listens outside of the headphones so um, effectively then uh, they're very well built and they use uh, some fantastic technology to reduce ambient noise by employing a microphone directed towards the outside environment that uh, outside facing microphone listens to the noise outside and plays a small amount of that noise uh, back in as data into the headphones uh, with the waveform face shifted by about 180 degrees. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm firing up my TS100 soldering iron. This is an absolutely awesome digital soldering iron. I've got a review of this on uh, on my uh, on my YouTube channel, and I will say hey, I absolutely adore this soldering iron. It's really good for uh, fine electronics work. So. Effectively then, um, you've got to uh, replace these drive speakers. So what we're gonna to have to do is just unsolder those two cables. Make sure you take a note of the orientation of those wires. Um, there, is, uh, uh, there is some uh, markings on the silk screen on the PCB there that do show you which is positive and negative. And then uh, in order to remove the backing uh, and gain access to the speaker driver, you're gonna to have to use a hairdryer uh, on sort of hot mode and you get everything nice and warm, reasonably sort of almost hot to the touch. And then effectively you can use a screwdriver to pry that cover open. And in there is a whole bunch of rubberized glue uh, that holds all of that together. As I say, these are really quite well made. And so then what you're gonna to have to do is get the soldering iron back out and uh, you're gonna to have to unsolder the speaker and again, just remember the orientation of uh, the speaker connectors there. So uh, then once you've uh, unsoldered the speaker, what you're then gonna have to do is uh, get the hairdryer out again and um, start, uh, start warming everything back up so that you can effectively pull that speaker out. So just skip to the pulling of the speaker out and there it is. That's all nice and hot in there now and the glue has become malleable. So we're gonna pop that speaker out. Da, da, da. Yep, and lots of sticky, goopy, rubberized glue. Now I find um, that Copydex actually is the glue um, to replace those speakers with. So just quickly then, do you know, is your speaker absolutely cream crackered or not? And the answer to that question, if you use a multimeter and you start to get numbers that are in the hundreds of kilo ohms um, or mega ohms range, then yes. What you should be seeing is anything between sort of 30 and 34 ohms. So if you have a quick look there, that was 34 ohms. And there's a copy dex glue. And what I'm using is a toothpick to um, a very carefully sort of put uh, a thin layer of that rubberized boingy boingy copy dex glue around around the speaker and also um, around the enclosure so that uh, those two mating parts effectively bond together properly. Another thing to consider when you're doing this, obviously, is um, once you've put all of this together, 
that speaker, if you were to move those headphones, that speaker could potentially fall out. So you don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that um, the speaker stays on a flat surface uh, and using gravity to make sure it stays in place. Now again, make sure that the orientation of the speaker is correct. So those terminals are back up in exactly the same place where you remove that speaker from. Resolder the terminals on the speaker. I'm sorry you can't really easily see what's going on in there, but I can just about see that. But the camera angle is such that you can't see it, my apologies. And um, get all of that done. Get some uh, get some more sticky glue around uh, around the um, enclosure there. Get the enclosure in place, and uh, and then screw everything down nicely, nice and tight, not too tight. Don't ruin the threads in the plastic or strip the heads on the screws or anything silly like that. Uh, and then effectively what you need to do is solder up those last two cables, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, the, the interesting thing here is that hairdryer um, is is uh, that's the only way that I've found of been getting of, of getting into uh, that particular enclosure in the QC 25s, and also uh, the only way that I found of being able to remove um, the speaker from its uh, uh, from its location as well. So you'll notice that that's all in place, and here's a lovely little view of that little digital TS100 soldering iron. I'm sorry for going on about it, but it is absolutely magnificent. If you haven't got one, they're not horribly expensive. Um, and uh, there's the uh, insides of, or a bit of a close-up of the insides of that uh, of the Bose QC25s. So make sure you leave that for a little while, give it a good bit of time for that glue to dry. Copy decks probably want to give that a number of hours uh, uh, on a warm day and uh, perhaps uh, overnight on a cold day. Uh, and then obviously what you need to do is uh, reassemble everything. So what we're gonna do effectively is exactly the same with the QC15s. They're built in a very, very, very similar manner. Um, there were some video tutorials on YouTube of how to fix these by putting bits of string in them and putting uh, little rolled up pieces of paper in them, that kind of stuff. Uh, they are only temporary fixes, unfortunately, that just encourage the two wires that have broken inside that little speaker insert to reconnect. Um, and so to be honest, it's probably not worth going down that road. You might as well just replace the speaker. Uh, so anyway, I'll let you um, just go ahead and watch all of this, uh, enjoy the video, uh, I hope it's been very useful as always, please thumbs up, subscribe and uh, you know, watch out for more technology and repair related reviews uh, from Dubious Engineering. Uh, thanks ever so much for watching, washing, watching, thanks ever so much for watching, I hope this video has been useful, cheers.